The goal for this lecture is to differentiate between a web server, a web container and an application server. A web server serves static content that is static HTML and images which we put on the web server's file system. There is nothing dynamic here. No server side programming, no database connections and no dynamic generation of HTML. Examples of web servers are Apache and Internet Information Services from Microsoft. These web servers are capable of generating dynamic content using plugins. For example, the Internet Information Services can use a .NET runtime plugin and then we can write server side programs in ASP.NET and VB.NET and our clients can then get dynamic HTML. These VB.NET and ASP.NET programs can connect to the database, fetch the data and generate HTML on the fly. The next mega component is an application server. As the name itself says, an application server, if we deploy our applications, which we can code in Java, .NET or whatever server side programming languages, they will provide services to our applications for free. That is the transaction management, security, dependency injection and concurrency. So instead of we worrying about all these requirements, we can simply focus as developers, we can focus on the business logic and the application servers will provide all these services out of box to our application. We can simply configure these services for our application using the configuration information which these servers provide. Our clients can then access, send in a request and can access the dynamic HTML. Typically from a web browser, they can access dynamic HTML content on the network or over the internet. In the Java E space, these application servers are divided or are logically divided into a web container which knows how to run the life cycle of Java server side Java programs like servlets, Java server pages, JSF which is Java server faces and also web services. So the logical division of a web container knows how to run these components and send HTML or whatever response back to the browser. A good example or a famous example for a web container is Apache Tomcat. It is not a complete application server but it is only a web container capable of running these components. The second important container is the application client container which knows how to do dependency injection and also main, manage security for our application, authentication, authorization, confidentiality and all that. So the dependency injection, if you are not familiar with, if class A depends on class B in our application, instead of we instantiating class B inside class A, the containers will instantiate the class B and inject that class B at runtime into class A so that we can simply focus on the logic and the dependency injection is a service provided by the application servers or the application client container inside an application server. Finally, we have an EJB container which knows how to run the EJB lifecycle and also it knows how to maintain or manage transactions. So it implements the Java Transaction Management API which is what we use for transaction management. It provides that particular service. Again, all these containers are only a logical division. They need not physically exist separately. They can be one single huge library. This is just a logical division. But Apache Tomcat is a web container and not an application server. Examples of application servers are WebSphere from IBM, WebLogic from Oracle, JBoss and there are several other application servers that we can buy and which we can use for free from the open source space. We typically use both the web server as well as application server in a Java EE application. So when we deploy our applications in production environment, we'll have a Apache web server which knows how to communicate with the application servers like WebLogic, WebSphere, JBoss on which we deploy our application and this web server can serve all the static content. So if the client is requesting for some HTML pages and images, this web server will take care of it. But if it is some dynamic content which has to be fetched from the database, then these web servers will communicate with the application server once they are configured and these application servers will run 
the components or the application components that we develop which connect to the database and has all the business logic in them and this application server at the end of it takes the response from our application sends it back to the web server which in turn sends it back to the web browser as i have already mentioned these application servers provide services like transaction management security dependency injection and so on so to summarize a web server only serves static content back to the client whereas a application server can run our application which is a dynamic application that knows how to connect to a database and produce dynamic html images and all that and the application server provides services to the applications which are deployed on it the application servers in the java e space are typically divided logically into containers starting with the web container the application client container and the ejb each of these containers knows how to maintain the life cycle of the various java ee server side components in addition they provide services like transaction management security dependency injection and so on in a typical runtime the java ee application runtime we use both the web server as well as a application server to provide whatever we need for our application.